Hey guys, what's up? My camera's like so dirty, so here we go, wash it off. A lot of people take pictures on social media and I notice their camera's lens, especially the front facing ones, are never clean. So wipe them off, use one of those microfiber. That's not why I'm here though. Hopefully you guys are having a good Sunday teaching you about the tactical advice of taking a front camera picture. What's up guys? So I am excited to be here. Who is on? Who is this? Somebody joined. I don't know how to see her. Uh, Stacy, hey, hey, what is up? I'm excited to be here on Sunday drinking bulletproof coffee. I happened to find some ghee in the cupboard, so I made coffee with ghee, bulletproof style. It's good stuff. I sometimes use um, coconut oil because it diffuses the caffeine slower. So if I just drink straight up coffee, it goes into my blood too fast and I get really like hyper too too fast and lord lord help us we don't need me on coffee all at the same time with that healthy fat like linger the caffeine in a longer displacement so okay somebody not somebody a lot of people not a lot even people that i work with are always wanting to get better like that's the best part about my what i get to do every day is Everybody's always wanting to improve. They're wanting to get better and make make improvements in their life so they can be awesome in, in spiritual aspects, health, physically, emotionally, like whatever reason that it is that people want to get better, they're doing things and they run into these roadblocks. And one of the roadblocks is emotional eating. Sometimes it gets in the way of not only our physical form, like I know for me, guys, man, I gained way more weight than I needed to because I was emotionally eating. Heck, I mean, there's way worse addictions. Just know that up front. Like, at least we're not smoking pot or meth or doing, you know, drugs that are illegal. Not that pot is illegal. I don't even know. But I'm not even going to go there. No judgment in this zone here. But anyway, like, we're not doing, we're not, like, over drinking. We're not binge drinking. Like, emotional eating, just put it in perspective. It's not that bad. Like, <laughs> give yourself some grace here, people. Like, I know I needed to give myself grace, too. Like, emotional eating is not that big of an issue. And I would get emotional about emotional eating. Like, I'd start eating something, and then I'd feel guilty. And then I'd just be like, well, I already messed up my program. I'm just going to eat the rest of this pie. And then I'd feel even worse. But if I would have just stopped from the get-go, be all right. But anyway, I wanted to give you guys four tips about what you could do to address your emotional eating. Um, so the first tip I have is ask yourself, why am I feeling like I need to eat, eat right now? Maybe you're actually hungry, okay? Maybe, I mean, for me sometimes too, I just, I'm actually hungry. Snack, like it's okay to eat food. Um, sometimes it's the place that I'm in. Maybe it's I'm just walking by the kitchen, which is where I'm at right now, and just being in the kitchen like makes me wanna eat food. So check it, check that. And then two, maybe it's, Maybe it's an event that happened prior to it. So for me, let me just take you on a little journey, a little story back in the day. So when I was working at the chicken farm, Rose Acres, I worked my way up the ladder, if you will. I started there doing like very easy stuff, just like cleaning, collecting the eggs. Just my, I didn't have to manage anybody. I just had to sweep and it was great. I got to hang out with the chickens and I was at a really good weight there. Uh, I started taking on management a few years later and I noticed I started gaining weight because I was like speeding to get home from work. Like I was, I was in management over 30 people and I'm like a person that I don't like conflict. I avoid conflict and I mean, I'm getting better, but I just didn't like being in conflict all the time. I was always making decisions. I always had to like not always, but many times I had to tell people stuff they didn't want to hear. And me being a people pleaser, I felt really bad about like, oh, this person, they can't take their vacation today. And then they'd be all pissed off and mad at me, which they weren't really mad at me. It was their own issue. But anyway, like I would carry that stress 
that anxiety, that overwhelm with me. And it just kind of built up in my system. I could feel the tension just literally leaching onto my body. And I knew as soon as I get home, I could eat these cookies. I could eat a cheesecake. I could make a, make some cake and I could eat the food. And it was like a release. It was like a trigger. Like I associated this food with my body being able to let go and relax. And it was, I asked myself why, like, I had to understand why was I eating like this? Was it, and it was the event, it was a, it was a situation at work where somebody didn't like what I told them, what they had to do, and that stressed me out, and that stress was causing me to overeat. Um, sometimes it's like a person's voice, just hearing a certain individual's voice is, could, could be what causes it. Um, so that's like another reason, like this why aspect, like why am I overeating? Because I heard their voice. So, so let me tell you a story. When I was a little kid, I had, this is going to sound really crazy, but it's, it's like, it's helped me understand why I'm an emotional eater. So when I was a little kid, um, my brain associates food with happiness, like around the dinner table, like I'm showing you snacks, like we would be eating and everybody was happy. Everybody was joyful. Like if we were eating, we were good. Like that's, that's like a, like my heart remembers and my brain associates this time around food and dinner, like a fellowship, a happy time. Like we were done with chores at the farm, like everything was done, a happy time. So, um, when I was in trouble or when I was like not following the rules or not doing what I was supposed to do, I, I would get stressed out and the only time I could be happy is when I was eating. So I associate now as an adult, like food with, with happiness, with joyfulness. And that is not the case. We are loved unconditionally. It does not matter what we did, who somebody thought we were supposed to be or who we were, who we were with. It doesn't matter. Like we're already love. Food and love are not the same thing. That was something that my subconscious brain had to try to understand and reprogram is that I'm worthy. It doesn't matter if I'm overwhelmed. It doesn't matter if my dad is upset at me, like was upset at me through 15 years ago when I was a little kid. Like I have to separate that, that situation from the feeling I'm having now that's causing me to go to food for happiness. Um, so that is a really long story. Hopefully that makes sense. If you guys don't understand or want to chat further about that, just comment below or message me or whatever. Uh, so number two way to, um, help yourself from emotional eating is instead of taking away things, stop taking away things. Like stop taking away, um, the food that you love or taking away calories, but instead add. So add half your body weight in ounces of water, like add that weight. So, or add that water. So in my case, like not currently, but I was a I was 200 pounds. So I required 100 ounces of water. So I added a hundred ounces of water, which is like over a gallon of water to my lifestyle every single day. It was a non-negotiable. I'd fill that dang water bottle up before I went to bed. So it was ready right away in the morning. And anytime I had to drink the water, I'd try to do like 10 full chugs. Otherwise I'd just be sipping it all day. And that was annoying and a waste of my time too. So yeah, add half your body weight in ounces of water. Number three is get enough freaking sleep because when I'm tired, I know my brain does not make good decisions. My brain gets fatigued. I can only make so many decisions in a day. I mean, I'm no genius, but when I do get enough sleep, it makes making decisions and healthy decisions so much easier. So get eight hours of sleep. If you know your body, if you know like, Val, I only need seven and I'm fine. Okay, fine, seven, whatever. Maybe some people need more. I know there was a time in my life where I required like nine hours of sleep every single day because of the amount of work I was putting in. Uh, do you boo? <laughs> Try for eight hours, shoot for that. That's a good starting point. Um, also like don't, if you're used to like literally only getting four hours, don't try tonight to get eight hours all of a sudden. Like don't go from four hours 
to eight hours in one time, like gradually add on time to the amount of sleep you're getting. Because if you don't, you're going to continue to perpetuate this emotional eating and you're going to continue to just get hit at that roadblock. You're just going to run into emotional eating every time and you're just going to keep hitting that roadblock. And the, that is the actual definition of insanity is like running into a wall over and over and over again, expecting things to change. If you don't change, like I know for me, I need to hear this message too. If you don't, if I don't change Valerie, you're going to keep running into tiredness and making poor decisions and continue to like have poor energy and continue to just stay stuck and only make a certain amount of money or be able to help a certain amount of people. So gradually add on sleep. Get the sleep. And the fourth and final thing that I have for a uh, tip for emotional eating. Hey, Kelly, what's up, girl? What up, what up? Glad to be, glad to have you here. We're talking about emotional eating. I have four tips. I'm on tip four, which is do something to cope with the stress or do something to cope healthy. Instead of running to the refrigerator when you're stressed, when you're bored, when you're low on energy, do something else. For me, I love to run. I love to do yoga. I love to do kundalini yoga. I also love to take baths and meditate. So instead, after a long day of work or dealing with a stressful situation where you just want to eat a cookie, try instead doing something else that's going to actually have good benefits to you. Maybe it's filling that tub up with Epsom salt and just soaking in the tub. That is, that simple act could be something that turns, turns your world around. Like imagine just how happy you're going to feel, how excited you're going to feel after a day, two days, three days, four days, a week, two months of making the decision to take an Epsom salt bath instead of running to the refrigerator for a cookie or, or maybe it's like overeating. Maybe you're actually eating healthy, but it's just over. It's like too much. Hey Josh. Wait, I think he's here. <laughs> what up? Welcome. Welcome. We're talking about emotional eating. I get questions about that on, on a frequent occasion. So I'm addressing the, what I do. And I'm not perfect, you guys. Like, oh my god, I wish I was. I'm so, I'm so glad we're talking about this because I need to hear this message as much as anybody else. But I've been studying it and recognizing my emotional eating for like four years. So I feel like I, I have knowledge and skills about what to do. It's just a matter of having accountability and keeping it at the top of my awareness. So my call to action for you guys is choose one of these things I just talked about whether it's asking yourself why you're feeling this and like more deeply understanding why you're eating to soothe yourself. Number two, drink enough water. Number three, get enough sleep. And number four, um, doing something else to cope with the trigger that caused you to eat. So choose one of the four and write it on a sticky note. Like get a sticky note, get out a piece of paper, get out a piece of mail. Hey Crystal, what up girl? So I'm glad you're here. We're talking about emotional eating and I'm glad you're here. So excited, wave, wave, wave. Hello, hello, hello. Cool, fellow energy enthusiasts. I love it. Okay, so grab your sticky note and literally choose one of the four uh, tips that I had on how to cope with or how to overcome emotional eating, write it on a sticky note and put it wherever you're finding yourself emotionally eating. I'm sure it's like in the kitchen, maybe it's at work, maybe it's somewhere at your workplace that maybe it's at your desk. You're like a muncher at your desk, which that's me too. But anyway, take that note and write down one of those four tips um, so that you can reprogram your mind. A lot of the times that we just keep getting stuck is because we forget. We're we forget like why or what we're supposed to do in the time when our brain is already foggy, it's already given up, it's already feeling bad. We just need a reminder of like what is right, what is true for me right now. And maybe it's, oh, I see, okay, I need to drink half my body weight in ounces of water. Okay, I see the sticky note. I'm going to get my water bottle out and I'm going to take those chugs of water. And, and heck, just like doing that might repro, like might change the tra trajectory of where your mind is going. Um, 
Or maybe it's um, the yoga. Maybe it's like anytime I feel stressed, I'm going to just breathe. I'm going to remember to breathe. So you have that sticky note like breathe right now. Or maybe it's okay, I'm going for a run after work and that's what I'm going to do. I keep reminding myself after work, I'm running. That's what I'm doing. Whatever it is for you. Maybe it's dancing. Dancing is fun too. I love that shit. Um, la lastly, what I want you to do is share with an accountability partner, a friend. It can be me. You can use me. Tell me what you're doing. I would love to love to hear that. And be rigorous, rigorously honest. Like be so obnoxiously honest with this person that it's actually going to lead you to the answers, the solutions that you want. Um, just somebody that you can be so honest with that you're not going to feel judged by. You're not going to feel like, oh, if I tell this person what I actually did, they're going to chew me out. I don't feel comfortable around this person. Uh, just somebody that would understand, probably somebody that's maybe going through the same thing or has overcome it so that you can have that accountability for the next seven days. Do this for seven days in a row. Write that sticky note. Half my body weight in ounces of water. And then tell an accountability partner. Call them up, text, send this message to them, have them join this group. And whatever, like bring the awareness to yourself and your friend on what you can do to overcome emotional eating. So I love you guys. I hope that made sense. And if you have any questions about what I'm talking about with this emotional eating business or something else that I haven't covered. I mean, I'm not an expert in in any way like but I think like I've done enough research and learned enough about this that it's 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 good and time for me to share my wisdom of how far I've come with my own emotional eating issues uh, hopefully you guys have an epic rest of your day I'm getting ready to go hit up the grocery store and do some meal prepping and go for a run if, if there's rain I guess it's kind of not raining right now but yeah hopefully Hopefully you guys have an epic day. I'm so glad you're here, Kelly, Stacy, Crystal. So glad you're here. Love that you're a part of this Facebook community since we can't be in community together so much. I'm still doing yoga classes in person, by the way, if you're interested. I have, I'm figuring out the glitches to getting the classes all online. If that is something that interests you, please reach out, text me, call, whatever, and I will get you hooked up with the Zoom link to do the online stuff. And I'm also doing in person, but use your own discretion if you want to come to class. I'm not going to be like judgmental if you come to class or not. Just do it. Do you boo at home, in person, whatever. It's all good in the hood. Um, also still doing the Reiki course. I know Kelly's here. So yes, Reiki course is still on. It's a small group. So I'm excited. My house is clean. We, we feeling positive vibes. No no bacteria, no virus can live in our space. We're too, we got too much bright white light coming out. It's, it's killing those little guys. So, <laughs> I mean, it's sending them up into the sky. But anyway, yeah, um, I'm excited. Let me know how your, how your emotional eating tactics work. And I'd love, love to hear if it's, you know, something that's working for you or not working for you. Or maybe you, you need some like words of wisdom, encouragement, just some love. I'm here for it. Have a great Sunday, guys. Thanks for tuning in.